hands are bouncing. That's a live football, and oh. Sentinel picks it up. It was kind of juggled around on the punt return, and that was number 26 for Capital. Mark Norby really couldn't get a handle on it, and the ball just kind of trickled away, and it was just lying there. The five-yard line, Sentinel jumped on it. Size of one and a save at the one yard line and it's down at the one. Wow. <laughs> Snap. Hold is good and the kick is on its way and it is good. He got it wow. from 46 yards. Rolling again on the rollout and he's going to throw it to the end zone and it is going to be intercepted. Wow. What a grab. Anyway, first and 10. 12 and it's going to be Ryland Orton's going to keep it around left side. Five to the corner and he's got himself a Good. touchdown. And McGinley's in trouble and he is going to be, oh, he's going to lose the rut. And here come the Spartans now and he's going to throw an interception. Wow. He was looking over the middle and really didn't have a chance. Here we go. Third and two. Hand it off to Ort, and he's in the end zone for a oh. touchdown, and he just got leveled as he went in, but it doesn't matter as he crosses the plane. That was a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> got totally laid out, but with 13 seconds left, he just, he just stood up straight and just kind of weaved right through the defensive line, just yeah. like that. Yeah, he knew where he needed to get. The trust fall's been working pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no you know, where you need to go. The old trust fall tactic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works every time. <laughs> We're down in five. Like, this is a huge play again, and it's McGinley going to roll out. He's in trouble, and he's going to get brought down. Sack for Sentinel. That was Bridger Deaton got to him first, and Sentinel will take over. Yeah, right at the 40. Pitch and catch out to Germer, and he's got a lot of room. Oh, there's no And he no could one's take him. it all the, all way. the way. No one's touching him. He will. Shotgun again. Remember, he can run it too. He's going to throw it out over the middle. It's intercepted by the Spartans, and it's going to be returned inside the 20, 15, 10, 5 touchdown. The Spartans get a pick six. And it's going to be a fake handoff, and Ryland Orr's got a lot of room. 20, 15, 10, 5 touchdown. Spartans on fourth down. Johnny on the spot. That's right. Ryland Orr's going to take it himself. He's going to find the end zone. Wow, what an incredible turnaround. Nice play there by Ryland Ott. Another Dick nice Germer guy. on the fly. There he goes to the end zone, just as we called his number. He'll be playing for the university next year. Second and one with the five-yard line. Or takes it, goes up the middle, and he's in for a touchdown. And that might be the icing on the cake that the Spartans need. They're up by 11. Hey guys, welcome back. We have the voice of all those uh, commentations. I, is that the right word? Yeah. Commentations uh, for the uh, high school sports. Um, and we have Cole Johnson on here. And uh, uh, David Yaffa is his color commentator. Of course, I've color, uh, colored him a couple times along with David. Um, but it's been an interesting season for sure. A lot of uh, jumping around, a lot of uh, teams doing really well in this season. Um, what can you say about uh, this? Because this Friday is a playoff game, and MCAT will be covering the playoff game. So, you have any uh, words to talk about that? Yeah, unfortunately, I will not be the play-by-play. -play, so I'll be out of town, so David will step in, and you can obviously be with him on that. Um, it's going to be a great game. You know, it's going to be. I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think. Um, I think Big Sky's going to take it, and the reason why I say that is because they can run the football, and they can really wear out defenses by doing that. Janet Caro is an all-state QB, and he's really just been taking the season into his own hands for Big Sky, so expect a lot of running from him, and it's going to be a high-scoring game, I think, like last time when they met um, the second week of the season. It was 44-40, to 40, Big Sky won, and yeah. I would expect a close game, but I really do believe with Big Sky running the football the way that they are, and just the type of season that they have had um, they're gonna take this one cool and I did notice like uh, me and David did do the commentate commentating for the uh, it was two weeks ago and uh -huh. it was uh, big sky against uh, who was that I think it was against glacier glacier yeah, yeah that's right and it, 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 it be, and glacier was on a hot streak yeah. Gla glacier was an ice cube glacier, glacier was really hot that week um, since their win of Sentinel they basically haven't lost since they beat Sentinel right and that upset 
which was surprising because uh, they were at 0 and 4 when they beat Sentinel. Mm -hmm. But then they were able to uh, come through, and and then of course Big Sky would be like, "No, you stop right here." Right. And then uh, it's such an interesting thing, just the dynamic of everything. Of course, the big upset was Sentinel's game last week. I mean, like, and not yeah. not only was it an upset, it w but it was a total uh, destruction of the other team at Capital. Yeah, it really was. I mean, Sentinel has been playing well lately. Um, Capital has lost three in a row. So it, the momentum was clearly on Sentinel's side. It was senior night for them. I think the big thing with Sentinel is I know what they're capable of doing, I think, game to game. Um, they were really fired up that game, and they literally dominated in all three phases. They they had they forced three turnovers in the first half, and it really kind of catapulted them yeah. to a huge win. Um, and they do have some momentum coming into this game. And again, for Sentinel, this is the type of matchup that you want. You didn't want to have to go to Billings. Right. Instead Big, you like Big home. Sky was going to host regardless, mm -hmm. which is really good because they have one of the best records in the Missoula area um, compared to uh, like Billings Senior, which apparently is undefeated. Right. And have right. been undefeated since, I think, uh, two years ago. Right. So they're yeah. they're definitely coming off their championship from last year. Um, I think uh, I think Big Sky may actually have a chance against them, but I, I don't know how did they uh, how did Big Sky perform against Senior? Uh, did you uh, remember? That? I I don't think or they played. I don't know if they played this year actually. Maybe they played last year against them, but I think they do have a shot. Um, I think this is going to actually be the title game, Big Sky and Senior. I mean, crazy things can happen. Right. I really like Billings Senior at home, though, and I think the reason why is because they have a senior running back, Nolan Askelson, that's just been really playing well. Actually, he's the QB, and he's the leading rusher as well. You know, he threw for 23 touchdowns this year and almost 2,000 yards, and I, I really feel like with Senior on defense as well, being at home in that game, it, it's going to be close. <laughs> I really do. Like, if Big Sky can run the football – and really take control that way and kind of dictate the pace. Right. I think they could stick with them. But it's interesting but it's, because you never know, like the uh, the uh, new life that got uh, breathed into um, um, Sentinel. Right. Like, like from last week, you right. just never know. Like um, Sentinel can be a, like a whole another wild card. Yeah, and I guess the way that the brackets are laid out, if Sentinel beats Big Sky, they actually don't go to Billings Senior next. They play the winner of the Helena Billings West game. So oh. they wouldn't see them until the championship, since the way that the brackets are laid. Oh, the, the higher seed doesn't get the lowest remaining seed. That makes sense. Oh yeah. So hmm. so uh, so if Big Sky wins this Friday, mm -hmm. um, who might they go up against? Right. So if Big Sky wins, they play the winner of the Helena Billings West game. Oh. So Helena is hosting Billings West, and yeah, that could be um, a very entertaining game as well. It would be great if Big Sky could win, because then I could be back. With MCAT <laughs> a week from Friday, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> calling <true>. that game. <laughs> so, like, if Big Sky did win this game, mm -hmm. and then um, who would have to lose? Like, Helena would have to win against Billings. Well, they would. Yeah, Helena. Big Sky would get another home game if they won, regardless. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't matter if it was Billings West or Helena; they would still be at home. Big Sky would be. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so it's it's they it, get two it, in a row. But of course, uh, this is an interesting little uh, uh, tidbit that you mentioned in the commentation. If you guys get a chance, there's a lot of interesting facts that were uh, given during just last game. Mm -hmm. um, because there wasn't much to talk about because Sentinel was basically <laughs> destroying capital. Right, so we just right. had to basically talk about brackets and talk about who might and what might happen. Uh, just basically speculating because that's all we, what right. we can really do. I thought Helena High was going to lose on – or I thought Flat – yeah, Helena High was going to end up uh, winning that game against Flathead. But they ended up losing. And that's why Big Sky's the two now <laughs> instead of the three. Wow. So – but of course, uh, this is the first time Big Sky has hosted a uh, football game since I was in high school back in 2004. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's probably been years since they've, I don't even know if they've been to the state finals in God knows how long. So it's been a while been. since they were able to contest? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, and I know for Sentinel, you know, it'd be great because I don't, they haven't won a home, they wouldn't have won a playoff game in like over 30 years. I mean, they've only been in the playoffs five times in the past 30 years. So, again, this is the right matchup for Sentinel. I think it's going to be close. I really do. Yeah. I just feel like with Janet Caro, he's a senior. He's going to take the game into his own hands. Oh, yeah. And then, like, if you, like regardless of what um, what happens, it's, I mean, the like, Missoula team is going to go into the semis. Right. We, we know that much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of nice about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, someone's going to come out on yeah. top. So, and <laughs> so. the finals is probably going to be hosted in Billings, most likely. I think so. Um, Bozeman's going to have a tough time. I mean, they're the they're the eight seed. They're 500 this year. You're going up against a 10-0 and 0 team. Yeah. Got to get Billings senior. Even Flathead and Capital in Billings. 
And it's, just, it's such an out. interesting dynamic, too, because, you know, some of the towns, like, Bo- um, Bozeman is just as big as Missoula. Right. But then again, it's like they have one high school. Right. And they'll be expanding to two in the next couple of years. Wow. They're going to branch off and build another Because one. I know that a Flathead, uh, basically five or six years ago, they branched off into uh, the Flathead Braves and the, you know, the Glacier Wolfpack is mm-hmm. the new school there. Mm-hmm. Um it's such a, I mean, like, of course, Billings has always been kind of like two schools, yep. two big schools, and they've always kind of um, been done really well in their football team. Yep. But high school sports is always so interesting because the dynamic between um, teams and players change. It's like it's a new team basically after a year or two, basically. Yeah, it's it's constantly evolving, and I think Sentinel has a lot of good things that they're looking forward to. You know, even Deli- Elias DeWaters, their running back, didn't even play much because of his ankle injury. So he'll come back next year as a senior. And again, I think that Sentinel is growing as a football team. Inconsistencies, I think, have really hurt them. Like that Glacier game we talked about, I think that's probably a game that they should have won. Yeah. Glacier just dominated that game from the very beginning. So it, it was just it's, was what it was. It's like momentum. Like yeah. if you have a good momentum going and you know how to hold on to it, you can carry it on forever pretty much. For sure. For yeah, and sure. like look at look at Billing Senior. They they grabbed the momentum a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they basically have been able to move forward for sure. So yeah. it just really depends. And like a lot of times, um, with a team that really leans on their seniors, if there's a lot of seniors who are your stars, mm-hmm. you lose basically all of them by the next year. So That's true. And Sentinel had 12 graduating so on senior night. Billings Senior has their QB and their um, running back. That are, or excuse me, Gabe Solser, their wide receiver is a senior too. So they're, they are going to lose some pieces next yeah. year. So it could open up next year. Okay. For other teams. So um, I just want to give a, a shout out uh, saying that MCAT will be live streaming this on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. Yeah. Uh, the name constantly changing all the time. So you can check that out. You can find us on our Facebook page, uh, but also go to MCAT.org for more information about this.